Hey folks, the time is 9.09 on uh, Saturday, December 4th, Uh, and I uh, just wanted to reach out, and uh, let's uh, get right into it. So, uh, in sports today, um, Baylor was able to hold off. Uh, Oklahoma State, which was uh, interesting. It was, uh, you know, Oklahoma State seemed like they might might have come through. Um, but, uh, yep, right now there's a uh, little under 14 minutes left in the second uh, quarter of the Big Ten championship game. And uh, number two, Michigan, is up uh, 14 to three over uh, 13, uh, 13 ranked Iowa. The Michigan Wolverines, um, as some of you may know, have a uh, season record of 11 and one, while the Hawkeyes are coming into this game with a record of 10, 10 and two. So, um, if you want to have a safe car ride, I would say your best bet would be in the passenger seat with one of the Iowa Hawkeyes driving because their hands will be likely at 10 and 2, just like their record for this uh, 2021 college football season um so that's what's going on with the michigan iowa big 10 championship game taking place here in beautiful indianapolis indiana at uh, lucas oil stadium home of the indianapolis colts and uh home of the uh, u2 concert uh, with Beck from a few years ago, uh, where I uh, immediately started crying as soon as Larry came out and started playing that drum beat. You know. It was pretty cool. Um, well, with my dad. Um, yeah, we parked at, uh, we parked at a building nearby that, um, is affiliated with the company he works for, and for the event, um, they were letting a non-profit, uh, operate the parking and, uh, use the money for their organization and the organization was uh the one started by um uh Rupert from Survivor and uh he was there with some volunteers and they were helping people park and uh I smiled and waved to him and he waved back and uh it was nice but he was at the end of the parking lot away from the event and we were in the middle and so um i uh i had a chance to like walk over there and uh you know like actually meet him but since he was directing traffic into the parking lot i didn't feel like it would have been worth it uh trying to take his time when he's trying to do something with like people and cars in in a busy area um you know it's like uh if you see someone you know at a restaurant that's one thing but when you see someone doing community service uh you know, you don't want to bug them. I mean, 
I would never bug anybody in a restaurant either. That's not what I'm... Well, I mean, I've bugged plenty of people in restaurants. But I don't think any of them are celebrities. Don't tell them. Um, but, uh... Yeah. So, uh... That's what's going on in sports. Um, let's see. Thing came in on the wire. Um, let's see. Hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, Cincinnati. Uh, came came out on top over uh, Houston with a final score of 35 to 20. So that's cool. My grandma was telling me about the Cincinnati head coach recently. Apparently he's a stand-up guy or something. Let's see. Alabama beat Georgia. Uh, Louisiana beat Appalachian State. Uh, Utah State came out ahead of uh, San Diego State. Uh, and currently Pittsburgh is down to Wake Forest. 21-14 uh, Wake Forest uh, ranked 16 and Pittsburgh ranked 15. Um, let's see, Pittsburgh's got the ball, it's first and 10 at the Wake Forest 34, with uh, a little over 13 minutes left in the second. So, that's pretty cool, that's what's going on with college football right now, and uh, let's go, uh, let's check the wire, let's see some headlines, let's see. Oh, Chris Cuomo got fired by CNN after after investigation into aid to brother Andrew Cuomo. This is an interesting, uh, you know, situation. But uh, I uh, can't relate. I don't have a brother. stepbrothers but I don't know if I would uh, lose my job in broadcast journalism for either of them and that's nothing against them you know I uh, I don't mind them you know but uh, I wouldn't back them up and risk, risk my broadcast career, you know, but, uh, yeah, I guess that's the, uh, that's the difference between me and Chris Cuomo, so, let's see. Um, Bitcoin uh, price tumbles after Wall Street sell-off, according to the Wall Street Journal. So, I guess if it is a, uh, if the price going down is related to uh, Wall Street selling selling off then what better source than the Wall Street Journal for a story about it I think the Wall Street Journal has a real issue and uh, maybe not for the reason you think I just think all of these different journals sh shouldn't be published. 
I think some things should be private. I don't think all these associations and uh, organizations need to constantly publish their own journals, you know? It's like, uh, I don't know, it's just really, it feels self-important, you know? Like what if I published my journal every day? You know, the and with the circulation that they have, why do so many people read it? All you have to do is look at who's writing it and realize that since they're publishing it, they think that they're better than you. And that their thoughts are more valuable than yours. And uh, I don't know if uh, your thoughts are invalu as invaluable as you might think, you know? So what's the point? in carrying water for people like that, you know? In the New England Journal of Medicine, like, uh, I feel like they've had to put, like, uh, at some time in their history, they had to put articles out by, like, Sweeney Todd or something. Or, uh... I don't know, like, uh... Like, what did they know about medicine over there that other people don't. You don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Let's see. Let's go uh, look into the history of the New England Journal of Medicine. All right, it is, according to this source, uh, it is a weekly medical journal published by the Massachusetts Medical Society. Uh, allegedly, it is among the most prestigious peer-reviewed medical journals, as well as the oldest continuously published one. So, that's interesting. So, uh, let's see, 1800s, um, then it was... Purchased by the Massachusetts Medical Society. Uh, okay, yeah, so uh, it uh, looked like it had a name change. Yeah, so they had a 1921 rebrand. Um, wow. In 1921, the Massachusetts Medical Society pur purchased the journal for one U.S. dollar. 
equivalent to fifteen dollars in twenty twenty, and in nineteen twenty eight renamed it to the New England Journal of Medicine. So that's interesting. That is a uh, one hour of human labor, according to some people's understanding of labor value. Wow. Periodicals are real fascinating. They, uh, they, uh, come out, um, you know, over time. And, uh, it's just nice. You know, but I don't think they should be journals. Um, you know, I don't think journals need to be published, but they can be a magazine, you know. Magazines are cool. All right, and the weather right now in Indianapolis, it's uh, clear skies, uh, well, balmy, 37 degrees. Uh, the low tonight is, uh, let's see, 32. Um, and uh, then uh, sunrise tomorrow is uh, 7.50 a.m. And uh, it will probably not feel like a sunrise, depending on where you are, until around 9 a.m. because it's going to be cloudy. As a matter of fact, if I had to use an icon to describe the weather tomorrow, Sunday, December 5th in Indianapolis. It would be a cloud with rain underneath it. And if I were to try and quantify the likelihood of that being the case tomorrow, I very well might say 80%. Uh, that being said, uh, the weather in Indianapolis for uh, the week of... Uh, December 5th, starting on Sunday. We've got a high of 59 with a low of 30. Monday, partly cloudy, high of 57 with a low of 23, going into a cloudy Tuesday with a high of 30, low of 19. Wednesday is looking like partly cloudy with a high of 34 and 23. And that little bit of sunshine is going to go away on Thursday. Uh, it's going to be cloudy with a high of 43 and a low of 25. Going into a rainy early weekend with uh, a 40% chance of rain on Friday with a 50% chance of rain on Saturday. Both days with a high of 54 with a low of 36 on Friday and a low of 37 on Saturday. Uh, Sunday, partly cloudy, with a high of 39 and a low of 28. Um, and then, wow, this is, what, like a 10-day forecast? <laughs> wow, half of this, like, is, oh, man, this is funny. Okay, so not Monday, December 6th, but Monday what, December 13th is going to be sunny with a high of 43 and a low of 28. And that is so far away. Um, 
I wish I knew more about betting because I'm just now realizing it would be fun to start betting on weather forecasts. And I don't know if that's a thing. But uh, I feel like it'd be a pretty interesting It'd be pretty interesting because, you know, they tell you what it's going to be. And so they're banking, you know, they don't want to be wrong. But then it changes over time. So what, what meteorologists think Monday the 13th is right now will be different Thursday the uh, something this upcoming Thursday uh, so yeah I mean I guess we'll see that's what they say the weather is going to be so let's uh, let's hold them to it you know uh, the air quality right now in Indianapolis is uh, moderate with a quantification of 62, uh, which is in between the green and yellow, and well, well before the purple. Um, so that's the weather here in Indianapolis. Um, in Yellowstone National Park, it is mostly cloudy. And it is a 36 degrees. Nashville, Tennessee, 57. Cloudy. Bloomington, Indiana, clear and uh, 39 degrees. Um, let's see. And uh, the sunrise in Bloomington for Sunday, December 5th, is also 7.50 a.m. So, that's interesting. Uh, Portland, Oregon. Drizzle. 50 degrees. They got a lot of rain clouds out there for the next 10 days in Portland. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's rain clouds even beyond those 10 days for Portland, Oregon. But, uh... And tomorrow they get a sunrise at 7.35. And uh, let's see. It looks like tomorrow they might even be able to see the sun. It's partly cloudy with the sun slated to come out uh, around 10 a.m. to about 2 p.m. So, yep. Portland with the 7.35 a.m. sunrise. That probably won't come come out from behind the clouds until 10 a.m. So enjoy those three cloudy hours before the sun comes out. And you better be outside getting some of that sun because you're all going to need it. You got to get that vitamin D out there in Portland. Because that's going to be the only chance for the next 10 days is tomorrow. And I know none y'all in Portland are going to be in church on Sunday morning. So you have no excuse to not be outside trying to get what little sunlight you're being given. Because y'all need it out there. You know? You could really stand to benefit from some vitamin D. I just think that whole area. You know? <sighs> so.
So uh, now a little deals and steals segment. Um, I recently began working uh, for a utility company as a meter reader. And so I uh, work in the field, so to speak. And so after I get my handheld computer and my route, if I have to poop, it is in a public restroom. Unless I'm on that route that's by my house, in which case I'd just go home. But that's only one day a month, and there's no guarantee that I'll get that route. Because uh, of the, uh, the way the routes are scheduled and organized. So if I am working, there's a high likelihood that I uh, might need to call upon the uh, public restrooms of businesses. And uh, it's, it's tricky sometimes finding a place that has a uh, public restroom. You know, there are some uh, gas stations that uh, you can just, it's like almost guaranteed they're going to have a bathroom. You know, like uh, Get Go, uh, who publish their, uh, they publish advertisements for their, like, seasonal turkey tortilla roll-ups. And then I don't even think they have anybody working in that, like, kitchen area. Or is that just, like, a certain time of day? Are you supposed to go there at lunch? Do they have lunch shifts at the get-go? Is there, like, a... Are there regulars for lunch at the get-go? Because, like, yeah, I mean, they got that grab-and-go stuff. But, like, whenever I'm in one of those places, I don't think anybody's, like, doing hot food back there. And, uh... You know, I, uh... I like to keep my head on a swivel, so it's not like I'm just, like, not looking back there. I could be misremembering. I have no problem believing that. But I'm pretty sure... I mean, I don't need to get that deep into it. It's just weird to have a billboard for a tortilla roll-up at a gas station. And, uh, you know, I'll drop it. That's not the hill I want to die on. You know, and I don't know the hill I want to die on. But I, I know which ones I don't. You know, I guess all that is to say I'm glad to have found a resource to help me locate pub public restrooms. And I would like to tell you about it now. It's this smartphone application called F And they have thousands of public toilets on the map that are user generated and can be updated um, so you can see where you're at and then see where the nearest public restroom is um, I would say I haven't used it enough to be able to tell if this is a shortcoming but it um, 
it's something I'm keeping an eye out for, and that is um, some gas stations have had their restrooms like uh, out of order for a while and uh, I think it might be a strategic move and so I don't know if people are going on flush and being like yo like it says there's a public restroom but like it hasn't been open for like weeks you know so otherwise it's pretty cool you know all right back to sports we got the uh michigan wolverines still up 14-3 over iowa for the big 10 championship game and it looks like Pittsburgh and Wake Forest are tied at 21 um, with a little over five minutes left in the second. And, uh, yeah, it uh, appears as if we have a um, interesting development here. Um, in the world of the uh, British royal family, um, according to a source, Prince William reveals the 80s pop song his mother, Princess Diana, would sing in the car. And uh, let me see. All right, yep, it took one, two, three, four. It's in the fourth paragraph of this uh, report. Let's see. The Best by Tina Turner. So that's good news for uh, Tina Turner's people. Because that song is going to be number one on iTunes with people who love the royal family. Let's see. Looks like, uh, oh, wow. Uh, what do you, okay. I feel like if I actually read this report, I'd be able to communicate it better to you. So yeah, he, uh, he likes, I guess, uh, Prince William likes listening to music and so he listens to that Tina Turner song. Uh, he listens to Shakira with his kids and then he listens to ACDC. So he's not so different so different uh, to you, so different than you, different from you, so different from you, um, you know. You're not so different, him and you. Hmm. Wow, another very fascinating headline with a, uh, man, this is just devastating. Oh, man, I'm not even going to get into that. I don't think, I don't think that should have been published. I'm not going to name names. Butt feed. Let's talk food. Let's talk food, folks. 
I had a lovely piece of salmon for dinner that I cooked with some little uh, sweet potato bits that I cut up. Cut up and roasted those. And then I just cooked salmon and some butter. And then I ate it. And it was great. I've been trying to incorporate salmon into my diet for, you know, it's, uh, it's been a few months. I've been thinking about it, you know, but nervous because I, I, I only had it so long ago. And I don't remember how I had it. And it wasn't, it was, I never prepared it myself. And so I don't know. Well, I mean, I do now. I was just feeling very trepidatious about trying to cook fish. And I know you can eat it raw. It's just, I'd rather, I know, uh, it'll, you know, it'll take me a bit to, uh, you know, get used to that. Because, like, I've had sushi, but, like, I only get veggie rolls, you know? So, like, but I've also had sushi with raw fish in it. But it's uh, not my go-to. My go-to is that grocery store veggie roll. That is my go-to sushi. And uh, there was this place on the north side I went to a few times with my mom. It's pretty all right. But uh, I wouldn't go there on my own. And uh, I don't think she fucks with it anymore. So it's just the gas station. Not gas station. Hell no. The uh, grocery store. Yeah. Which I guess isn't that different because some of the grocery stores that you can get this sushi at, you can also get gasoline. But I don't think they have diesel at uh, grocery store gas stations. But uh, I don't know how many people you know, I mean, I could figure out, like, an aggregate number of diesel consumers, or, you know, or ballpark or something. But, uh, people that want to get gas at the same time as their groceries probably aren't, I mean, I don't know. I don't know enough about any of this to... Uh, try and speak definitively about any of it, but what I what I mean to say is I don't think a gas station at a grocery store not having diesel is a deal breaker, you know, because there's other places that you can find diesel. You know what I mean? So I don't want to classify the grocery store gas station as you know, sub-optimal, because they d might not have diesel, which they might have. So that's that's all I mean to say with that. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't mean to get too much into um, gas stations and grocery stores. It's just uh, they're all I know, you know. The only places I go anymore our gas stations and grocery stores. And uh, recently I reincorporated coffee shop. I would make it plural, but it's just one coffee shop. And it's pretty all right. It's interesting thinking about seeing and hearing and um, communicating 
about things you've seen and heard or being told about things that someone else saw or heard because uh, I feel like after enough time you realize it's pretty easy to see or hear something that uh, isn't real you know and I don't mean like hallucinations I mean like floaters you know like those little floaty worm looking things that you get in your eye when I was little I thought they were angels falling to heaven because I was in a house where touched by an angel would be on a lot you know in Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman and so when I'm little looking out of the back seat window of a car driving on the interstate and I see little floaters and when I follow it down it moves down I convince myself that I'm watching angels descend to earth. But that's not what is important. What's important is that we realize that if someone says they heard or saw something, you should try and find out where they heard and saw it. Try and get some details. Because it's very easy to just not ask where someone heard or saw something and just take it as, you know, fact. You know, because if you see someone walking down the street but like you're anxious and they're like walking fast you might be like that person is being sketchy because they're walking fast and they're not in workout clothes but you're in your car and you don't realize that it's colder outside than it is in your car and that person's probably just cold trying to get where they're going. But you just catch a glimpse of them when you're in your car. Like, oh, that person was ask, acting sketchy. Then you get where you're going. Person gets there. Like, hey, how you doing? You're like, I'm all right. I was driving down the street. And there was this person acting real sketchy. And, uh, and they're like, oh, wow. Uh, what were they doing? You know, and you're like, oh, they're just, they're walking real fast. You know, maybe they were like real bundled up. You're like, oh, they were just, you know, you know, all bundled up and walking fast. Like, oh, wow. That's, that is sketchy, you know, because they don't know what to say. So they'll just be like, oh, yeah, no, it sounds, you know, and then so. Two people think there's a sketchy person outside, but they're really, or not really, but they just could be just walking, you know? Or if you see a movie and you tell people about it, that's one thing, you know? But uh, you can't you can't be talking about things you saw in movies like they were things that you actually saw. You know what I mean? Like you know you were in a movie, right? And like just because you might have watched it, like uh, 
in your living room. And so, like, it felt like it was a part of your life. You didn't have any of those experiences that you saw on that movie. And, uh, and when you go outside, you're not in that universe. Like, the TV's inside. The movies are inside. You know, computers are inside. When you go outside, that's not the same thing. Outside is not the same as inside. So if you see something outside, that is different than seeing something inside. And that's all that I kind of wanted to get at there, you know. Let's watch this live feed of the uh, December 4th total, sol total solar eclipse that occurred. Let's see. Mm, interesting. see nothing happening yet. At 3 minutes 33 seconds into this live stream, there appears to be no change. Let's see. Uh, let's see. 11.46, nothing. No, 30.25. Starting to look like someone took a bite out of it. Starting to look like a little, little yellow guy that likes eating circles. 57.35. Looks like someone is about to sit on it and fish into the water. And it looks just like that. Let's see. Let's keep going. Let's find the, uh, let's see when it actually happens, you know, just looks like a small sliver, you can barely see the sun, let's see, there we go, it's getting smaller, smaller, wow, there we go, wow, look at that. That is bright. Holy cow. Wow, look at that. Okay, so it's really bright around the top right quadrant. But the other three quarters are kind of dim yellow. But I feel like that's about to change here real soon. Let's see. Hour and six minutes and 30 seconds into this live feed of the December 4th, 2021 total solar eclipse. And it's starting to get real. Oh man, look at that. Wow. Wow, that's interesting. It's the big black circle. And you can just see all the uh, all the sunlight glowing around that circle wow been an interesting day got that solar eclipse big 10 championship underway Portland is getting some of their only sunlight for the next 10 days tomorrow morning from 10 to 2 
and uh, what was there? Their sunrise is going to be 7:35. So that's what's going out on out there, the West Coast, um, Midwest. All of downtown Indianapolis is still under construction. And uh, it likely will be for the foreseeable future. They're just going to keep working on all these city centers. It's like uh, when the Super Bowl came to town and they had all those Wi-Fi hotspots outside. That was cool. You know. But, uh, yeah, today I uh, helped put up some Christmas decorations with my dad and uh, got me thinking about how that, now that I'm 30 and I, I'm just barely starting to understand who my parents are, I'm finding myself trying to, like, pay attention to see if they're ever like not being themselves because they're old enough that like they could slip into cognitive decline uh, and I don't know how quickly they would notice and that's not to say either of my parents are in that situation but it's now a possibility just like you know demographic wise and uh, and so it was interesting when I uh, when my dad said he had to get the uh, the ladder out of the attic and I was like maybe this is something that I should do I didn't say that, but I'm thinking, like, maybe I should be the one getting the ladder out of the attic, and maybe you should be running the shop back, back in the garage. But, you know, I, uh, I don't mean that in, like, uh, like, uh, that's just to say that I was very relieved when my dad came back with the ladder because now is the time that uh, I would have to go find out why he's not back with the ladder and then that's a whole thing. You know what I mean? So that was a close one. I also um, climbed up on that ladder pretty high. And I hadn't done that in a while. And I got to tell you, it uh, it's pretty wild up in that tree. It's hanging giant ornaments so that was cool then we hit hit that tree with some rope lights and uh, it was game over game over speaking of game over let's check back in to sports before we uh, call it for the evening let's see halftime big ten championship game Number two, Michigan, remains 11 points ahead of the 13-ranked Iowa. With this, they have three points, and then Michigan has 14. As uh, I mentioned earlier, if you are in a car and you're not driving, if I had to pick between an Iowa Hawkeye or a Michigan Wolverine, I would prefer an Iowa Hawkeye behind the wheel. 
uh, because they have a record this season of 10 and 2. And I uh, believe that would influence where their hands would be on the steering wheel. And uh, that's not to say Michigan would not be a safer driver as a Hawkeye. It's really just that with an 11 and 1 record, Michigan's hands would be uh, in a uh, suboptimal position on the uh, on the steering wheel. And that's actually according to standards that I think have since been updated. Because when I drive, I definitely keep my hands... Like, sometimes I'll have a hand, like, around 10, 9, 9 to 11. And then uh, I'll have, like, the, the minute hand down at, like, you know... 20 to 30. And so, rather than 10 and 2, when I drive, I kind of do like a 10, 25. You know? Or like a uh, 9, 20. You know what I mean? If, if we're looking at it like a clock, like with like hours and minutes so it's been a beautiful Saturday and I uh, look forward to a beautiful Sunday and I wish you have a wonderful Sunday I hope that the uh, this upcoming week is good to you I hope that you're able to balance the things that you need to do with the things that you want to do. I hope that some of the things that you need to do are things that you want to do. And uh, hopefully some of the things that you want to do, hopefully they're things that you, you need to do. But uh, yeah, I think the important part is just that you do them. So, just do them, and uh, do them to the best of your ability, your best changes every day. Um, so, just do your best in the moment. Don't worry about past moments or future moments. Time is on your side. So, keep that in mind. But uh, let's wrap it up here with uh, the final thoughts. So I guess final thoughts for this broadcast of the Serenity Now Reconciliation Hour would be not to lie to yourself about what you're experiencing. Because if you lie to yourself because you're uncomfortable with the necessary requirements to live in the truth that you're denying yourself, you very well might be putting others at risk of living suboptimally because you won't be honest with yourself. And that's like a fine thing to do, you know, like, if you want to, but just like, think about whether you are or aren't, and if you are, you can stop, if you want, you know, so, that's what's going on here, back to you. <laughs>